Hey, it's me, Raika. Today we're going to have a look at Azul, the Forgotten Champion from the Graveborn Faction. Now, this hero wears plate-based gear, is part of the Warrior class, and his primary role is to provide a significant amount of damage through his infinite stacking attack rating. So let's have a look at his abilities. His ultimate skill, Toxic Transfusion. Azul utilizes a powerful chemical, agent that immediately recovers some of his lost health. Now this lost health will restore 50% immediately and will also increase his haste by 20 points and attack rating by 35% for 12 seconds. The level two, effect duration is increased to 15. Level three, the effect duration is increased to 18%. Now, this is extremely powerful buff and we will get further into how this is extremely good for him. His next ability over here, Noxious Blast. When Idol's health is greater than 30%, he will use Noxious Gas skill. Now this is a little AoE ability that will circle Izold, dealing damage equal to 3% of his own health as damage to nearby enemies. Noxious Gas also causes Izold to receive damage equal to 1% of his own health as damage. Level 2. A Noxious Gas explosion occurs every 6 seconds, dealing 190% damage to nearby enemies and leaving them stunned for 3 seconds. The level 3 and 4 increase this explosion damage to 340%. His next ability, Needle Strike. Azul charges into a single enemy target, stunning them and knocking them into the air, finally stabbing the enemy with his needle for 190%. The level 2, 3 and 13 engravings increase this damage to 380% damage. His next ability, Hypodermic Heating. Azul injects himself, restoring 16% of his health that he has already lost per second over 8 seconds. The level 2 and 3 increase this recovery rate to restore 20% lost HP per second, and the 16 engravings effect duration is increased from 8 to 10 seconds. So let's have a look at his signature item. When you unlock Lethal Dose, when Azul uses Toxic Transfusion, this is his ultimate skill, he will also receive the effects of Hypodermic Healing as well. This is the Healing Over Time ability. The level 10, the damage Azul receives is reduced by 30% for 15 seconds whenever an enemy is slain while Azul is using Toxic Transfusion. So this is a significant amount of damage reduction. This is further boosted using his 20 signature item as this 30% increase to 50% damage reduction for 15 seconds and the 30 unlock. Azul cannot be controlled while using his toxic transfusion skill. So as we can see, this is a massive amount of control immunity and damage reduction and healing built into his signature item. So let's have a look at his furniture over here. Now this is his permanent stacking attack rating. When you unlock exertion, the 3 out of 3 unlock, Azul's attack rating is increased by 1% and his attack frequency is increased by 1% up until the end of battle every single time he loses 3% of his max health. So this is either the damage he inflicts on himself or whenever he takes damage from the enemy target. The Knight of 9, after using this skill, has been stacked 45 times. The effects of the skill Hypodermic Healing, this is the heal over time, become permanent and do not need to be actively used. So as we can see, he has a lot of self-healing, damage, damage reduction built into his kit, allowing him to solo carry your team to victory. So let's have a look at how he does in battle. So this over here is a wooden training dummy. So as soon as he walks onto battle, he'll slash and stab the enemy over here. So there's the needle strike, there's the explosion, and as we can see, there's noxious gas around him. This will continue to do AOE damage to the enemies. So if the enemies are grouped up closely together, they'll take a lot of damage from Izod over here. Now this is based off his health, so it does not stack over on top of his permanent attack rating increase. So as we can see, he's constantly stabbing at the enemies over here. So let's have a look at his ultimate. So right over here, he will begin healing himself. In addition, he will also have his epidemic healing. This is this little healing that he has. This is the toxic transfusion buff. As we can see, he's this neon green color over here. And he's getting stronger and stronger as the battle progresses. 
So let's have a look at how he does at a much higher level deficit. So from this particular battle over here, we can see that he was able to solo the entire team by himself over here. Now he does require a bit of support through either other heroes that can give him additional healing, attack rating or defense. In addition, he will also require a support like hero such as Zara to allow him that initial ramp up time. So when they eventually will die, his supports or his other allied heroes, he can easily solo the entire team. So let's have a look at how he does. Now this is 160 level deficit. So as we can see, he will need that initial healing from his allies such as Zara, and slowly over time, he's getting healing. Now, this hero is not extremely powerful. However, the longer the battle lasts, the harder he is to kill based on his infinite healing and his attack rating buff that he can provide to himself. In addition, he becomes immune to control effects, which allows him to tank even more damage, deal more damage, and allow him to solo the entire team by himself. Now, he's extremely powerful, especially at single target enemy heroes. However, he's not that great at dealing AoE damage. So he needs to be able to kill one enemy at a time. This will allow him to get that damage reduction, that 30 or 50% that he has. And as we can see, he's slowly starting to solo the enemy team. So there are four enemies left. So as we can see over here, he's going to get his healing. There we go. There's the noxious gas around him. Now he's going to one-shot Lucius, one-shot Anarchy. Now he's going to get his toxic transfusion. He's going to one shot the next hero and the last hero has been finished off. So as we can see, the battle did last for a significant duration of time. However, because of his infinite stacking, attack rating and haste rating and healing effects, this allowed him to solo the enemy team by himself. So what is the minimum investment that I would recommend into this allied hero? Now I would highly recommend getting his 30 signature item, and this provides him a tremendous amount of self-healing, damage reduction, and control immunity just from his signature item. The next one I would recommend is getting his 9 out of 9 furniture. This is because of his attack rating and attack speed buff that he gets permanently for the entire duration of battle. And in addition, this also supercharges his hypodermic healing where he does not need to cast it and he can start smacking and slashing at the enemies over here. Now, I do not recommend getting his engravings as they do not provide any additional benefit to him. However, they can help him survive longer as he is a bit squishy at the beginning of battle. So 30 engravings might be an answer to this survivability. However, if you have the right allied heroes, he can easily survive and out tank and outlive the enemies to be able to claim victory for you in battle. Now, I do not recommend getting his 60 engravings 